You're listening to KKSM AM 1320 Oceanside. And we're back on your morning drive. I'm Cor Snellander, taking you up till 12 o'clock with the best variety of alternative and pop music in all of beautiful San Diego. And on the phone, I'm joined by the one, the only, Jim Brickman. Jim, how are you doing this morning? Doing good. Thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure to have you. It really is such an honor. You are such an amazing artist. Where are you, what part of the country are you calling us from today? I am in my hometown of Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, I always hear about that town. How, how has that town influenced your, uh, your music? Well, I think, you know, no matter where you're from, you kind of look at the world from that point of view. And so for me, certainly that, you know, um, that was growing up with lots of uh, different seasons and lots of different weather and things like that. And sometimes that will have a, an effect on your creativity because you you create uh, based on what's around you in the world, whether that's uh, nature or or weather or people or romance or any of the things that inspire music and your surroundings have play a big part in that. And you make such wonderful music, and it, this is actually a great year for you. It's your 20th anniversary of your debut album, No Words. Congratulations, that's really amazing. How are you celebrating that milestone? <laughs> well, you know, it's it's always interesting to, to look back because when you're when you're on the journey through those 20 years, you don't you don't really notice it because you're always just doing it, you know. And and while it's happening, it's it's not you're not really conscious of the fact that it's been such a, a long time. So um, it's it's nice to be reflective. I think all of us uh, appreciate you know, looking back on um, on our lives and thinking about you know how we spent our time and who we spent our time with and. And so, you know, it's sort of a reflective time, I guess, more than anything. And how do you feel you've evolved as a music artist over the past 20 years? Well, I think being um, authentically who you are makes a big difference. In other words, um, trusting that, that you're really writing from your heart and that you're not trying to be something that you're not. I think uh, a, a lot of times we, especially when I first started, uh, there were a lot of people around, you know, everybody has an opinion, so everybody wants to tell you, oh, you know, you, sh- you know what you should do? You should do this, or you should, do- you should work with this singer or that singer. And a lot of times it's important to trust yourself and say, yeah, but what, what really comes naturally to me? And if, you're- if you trust that instinct and that gut feeling about, about how you should spend, at least as, you know, from my point of view as a musician, um, that's that's helped me quite a bit because otherwise you're you're not authentically uh, who you are. You're doing something that somebody else wants, and that never really comes out good. So I think I think trusting myself is one of the biggest things that uh, I've learned over this time. Is um, you have to do what comes naturally to you. As soon as you do that, that's the first thing people notice about you. And then it's uh, and then it's really real because it's not you're not faking it. Definitely, and your music has really touched, I believe, so many people's lives. A lot of people get married to your music, and they seem to really feel a connection. And as a result of that, you've you've had much success. I mean, four albums certified gold by the Recording Industry of America, as well as twenty seven top forty singles on adult contemporary charts. Fourteen of those, which went up to top ten smashes, and two Grammy nominations. That's really amazing. Do you have a particular accomplishment you cherish most? You know, um, honestly, the, the reaction of people where where the, where the music touches someone in an intimate way, whether it's a, whether it's a, a special moment like a wedding, or whether it's a comforting time, or whether it's a relaxing time, any any effect that something that I create has on uh, a po- in a positive way with somebody to me is more of an accomplishment than any award and you know it's uh, award recognition is 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 important um, within colleagues and industry but but really the reason that I make music is to connect with people emotionally and so um, that's that really is the the most gratifying and you do a great job of that your music is very emotional and is very romantic 
Well, thank you, Chorus. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jim. I wish I had a cool name like Chorus, though. That would I would probably have a a uh, a bigger career if I had a cooler name like Chorus. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jim. I, I do love my name. That is a great name. But you have a great name too, Jim Brickman. I mean, <laughs> and uh, going back even before the tw- twenty years out, what was your first big break in music, so to speak? Uh, I started out writing commercial jingles for radio and TV. Uh, that was how I, I got my start in Cleveland. I was uh, in advertising, and um, oh, wow. it was a great, a great training ground because when you write commercials, um, you're writing on demand. So if somebody says, I want a rock song for a, for a bug spray, I want a country song for an air freshener, I want a, a big band song for, a, you know a bank or whatever it is. <laughs> and so you get really good at uh, writing on demand instead of, uh, I mean, as a, from a production standpoint, from learning about singers and being in the studio and things like that. So my, 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 my first job break was that. And then, um, and then I did what a lot, a lot of my uh, colleagues do, which is I, um, I started I thought there was a place in the world for solo piano music that could calm and relax and inspire, and uh, I went in the studio just for myself, uh, not with any intention other than to see what came out. And I took those uh, that CD around to record companies, 30, maybe at the time, 30, 40 labels, um, and um, I got signed by Wyndham Hill. But, um, most most of the time, it, the break was about creating the opportunity, and I think that's the most important message, especially um, today when when um, a lot of things like The Voice or American Idol um, sort of imply that all you have to do is stand in line to audition to become famous instead of just go out there and do it. And did did you ever believe you would become as as big and successful as your career has? Uh, I, I you certainly can't predict the future. <laughs> so you never, you never know what, what life is, is going to bring. And, um, I, like I said before, you know, you're, you're always so kind of busy in it and, um, and having it evolve that it's, um, you don't really notice, you know, what it becomes yeah. you just because you're always just doing the work you know and um so i'm very thankful and i and i wouldn't trade it for anything it's been amazing but um it, yeah definitely unexpected and uh what what other music artists have influenced you and your style of playing you know it's a really uh it's a really funny thing i um you know i'm, I'm primarily a songwriter more than anything and uh i think a lot of people, if you ask a songwriter what influences them, they'll say, you know, they they listen to music of a certain style, but really when you're writing your own, um, in order for it to be unique to you, it really has to come from you and not, and not be uh, an imitation of something else. Otherwise, you sound like everybody else. And... Um, so I was always a fan. I'm a fan of singer songwriters. I'm a fan of, of um, you know, a lot of early, you know, generally speaking, pop music. So I am not really a jazz aficionado. I don't. I don't really listen to jazz or classical music. I'm. I really listen to pop music most more than anything, uh, because I'm a melody writer for the most part, and I'm a hook writer, and so I uh, I respond to very catchy melodies and things and especially from being a jingle writer um that was that honed that skill as well and you definitely have a very unique sound people can tell it's your song from the first note i hope so (laughs) because again you know people will come up to me and say um i want to be just like you you know or something and i and i always say no you want to be just like you you can you can use me as a model (laughs) but in order if you're there's already me so if you don't if you know you need to be you and and um have something to say in a way that is unique to you and uh i think that's a you know that's a, again another example that i was talking about about singers and, and some of these competition shows is that 
a lot of that stuff is, is based on imitation. And um, it's hard to find the originality in those things because, um, especially as singers. Definitely. And you've collaborated with some of the greatest singers of probably all time, including Donny Osmond, Martina McBride, Jordan Hill. The list goes on. Do you have a particular person that is, I don't want to say your favorite, but that you just enjoy the mo more than average collaborating with? Well, you know, you mentioned Donnie. Um, you know, he was on my tour for a couple of years, so we spent a lot of time together, and that, that was a very fruitful collaboration. You know, just like any duet of anything in life, whether it's sports or music um, or any kind of collaboration, you have to feel like you grow or get something out of, out of that, um, not like you're just doing your part and walk away. Uh, most recently, I would say the highlight um, last year for me was Johnny Mathis because it was such a, um amazing thing to work with such an icon and to have him singing my song. Um, that was really a, that was a big highlight, at least of the most recent collaborations. That would be a great duo. I'd love to see you guys together. And uh, not only are you mus a musician, though, but you are also uh, do radio as well. You have your own successful syndicated radio show. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, I, I always really, I'm a, I'm a naturally curious person by nature, so I it's always interesting for me to interview other people and learn and grow from them. I, I'm just naturally that way. So the weekend show is, is uh, I've been doing for 18 years. It's uh, called Your Weekend, and it's really a lifestyle, music, uh, health and wellness, uh, celebrity news, um, money, all the stuff you, you, that uh, is weekend-centric for people. Uh, always a lot of fun and very lighthearted, a lot of laughing, a lot of um, conversation, and um, and I enjoy it. It's a it's a it's a part of my life that is uh, it's it's a nice uh, respite from sitting at the piano and and it's verbal, which uh, is something that I you know on, from being on stage so often is uh, makes a big difference. Definitely. What what point did you decide to get into radio during your music career? Uh, well, I was spending a lot of time on radio stations because of my music. You know, I was always around radio because uh, whether it was jingles early on or whether it was my songs being played on the radio. Uh, and, and I was always enamored with uh, the, the theater of the mind that radio creates. And so um, I... You know, it was something that I had suggested to a radio station in New York, and then it it started in New York, and then it, it built from there uh, to become syndicated. And I've listened to it before. It's such a great show. You do such a great job on there. Well, thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. And people really do love you down here in San Diego. Do you have any plans of perhaps coming down here to perform sometime? You know, I would absolutely love it. <laughs> You just got to talk to uh, some of your theater friends and invite me there because I haven't been invited in a long time. Oh, really? Well, I'll definitely, I'll, I'll be yeah. your cheerleader down find here. The, find a theater, of course, for me to come play it. I, I will. I'm going to be your cheerleader and get you down here. All right. You do that. <laughs> I will look forward to it. Oh, well, th th And thank you so much for coming on the show, Jim. As I told you, you really are a huge idol of mine, so to get you on here has been such a pleasure. Is there anything, thank you very much. Is there anything else you'd like our listeners to know before you go? No, just appreciative of, of the way people find my music these days. You know, there's so many wonderful ways. A lot of people have a Pandora channel of mine, a lot of, uh, of ways to hear the music that you're not often getting in the, um, in the way that people used to. So it's always a, it's always a, a pleasure to um, have people find the music. And, and folks like you, Chorus, who feel, you know, who grew up with, with the music, that's, um, that's a really, it's a testament to, uh, to people's ability to connect with the power of of music and, uh, and it's a wonderful thing to hear oh thank you so much jim and thank you so much for coming on the show i hope you have a wonderful day and a great weekend ahead thank you chorus thank you jim and uh, stay on the line there for a second i'd like to say bye to you and that was our interview with uh jim brickman it was such an honor to have him here and uh that was exclusive right here on kksm morning drive with me chorus nylander Here's his song, It Must Be You, by Jim Brickman on KKSM, The Radio Revolution.